Okay, we're going to start off our discussion on ratio and proportion by defining what a ratio is. In this case, we have the definition given two non-zero fractions. We're going to call those capital M and capital N. The ratio of M to N is A to B, where A and B are non-zero fractions if M is being compared to N, then A is being compared to B. So basically, a ratio is simply a division problem, and that goes back to Theorem 5. If you take a look at Theorem 5, A to B is the same as A divided by B, and that's it. That's all a ratio is. However, remember, it can be a complex fraction because back in the definition, we said that it could be two non-zero fractions. So in essence, you could set up a complex fraction. That would be a ratio also. An example, let's say that we had the ratio of the number of boys to the number of girls is 4 to 5. So when we write that, we're going to call boys a capital B or big B, and girls is going to be big G. So if we set this up as a comparison or a division, it would be B to G is going to be equal to 4 to 5. Well, if we use our theorem of cross multiplication, we get b times 5 is equal to g times 4. Remember, these are also equivalent fractions. Well, if you can use the commutative property on one side, g times 4 can also be written as 4 times g. And let's say we back this up and put it back into a ratio, then Using cross multiplication but using it backwards, we can also say that b to 4 is the same as g to 5. Now, if that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, let's use, let's use actual numbers to show what is happening. So let's start again, and let's just say it's 4 to 5 is equal to 4 to 5. That's basically well, what we were saying. Boys to girls is 4 to 5. So they are the same. So if we use cross multiplication, we get 4 times 5 equals 4 times 5. Well, 4 times 5 is also equal to 5 times 4, which is a commutative property. And if you take that and put it back into its equivalent fraction form, now you have 4 over 4 is equal to 5 over 5, which is also a true statement because 1 is equal to 1. You can also turn it around and say 5 to 4 is the same as 5 to 4. So usually when you set up ratios and equivalent fractions, you can, using cross multiplication and commutative property, also be able to turn these around and still have equivalent fractions. All right, let's go back to our example. So this is where we left off, is that b to 4 is the same as g to 5. Well, if we write that on a number line, let's say that we're going to use a common value called u. And we used u, you'll see in just a minute, because it's going to refer back to something we talked about at the beginning of school. So if we do that, and we say that b over 4 is equal to u, then actually b is equal to 4 times u. Going back to, again, our definition of Division is just another way to state multiplication. So b over 4 is equal to u is the same as saying b is equal to 4 times u. And the same thing with g to 5. If we make that equal to u, then g is equal to 5 times u. Well, u, notice is 1 on the number line because, again, it could be any fraction that equals 1 or it could be a whole number. So if u is 1, then b would be equal to 4 and g would be equal to 5. So now we've got it set up that we have four groups. I'm going to have to flip this.
So the boys can be divided into four groups of you boys. So we can have a group. It could be three boys and have four groups of them. But then that means that we would have to have, the girls would have to be divided into five groups of three girls. So you would have, let's say if it was the unit of three, then you would have 12 boys and 15 girls. So this is just a really quick definition of what a ratio is. We're going to use this a little bit more extensively. But in essence, our first theorem for ratio is that if you have a ratio of two quantities, which we're going to call big M and big N, you can measure them as A to B. Then there's also a fraction U, some sort of unit or grouping, so that whatever your group is, M is equal to A times U, and N is equal to B times U. And you can come up with larger groups of, in this case, boy to girl, boys to girls, just by knowing what the ratio, the initial ratio is. And we'll do an example next.